Welcome to our webinar, How to Measure Unique Samples. Today we're going to demonstrate for you several ways that we have to measure those samples involving different instruments and different fixtures. We'll be using things like this MetaView with a stand and a holder to measure powders. We could also measure liquids. We'll be using a benchtop instrument, the CI7800, to do both a transmission measurement of a liquid and a reflectance measurement of a liquid and we'll be using our CI64 UV handheld device and a card holder that allows us to position the device correctly to measure something like a credit card or a debit card or something of that, of that sort. So our webinar will be focused very practically on how we can measure some very unique samples that maybe aren't easy to measure in normal measurement modes and we're gonna walk you through each of those one by one. So now I'm going to demonstrate for you a means we have for measuring both liquids and powders. We're going to use powders in this example using our MetaView VS3200 instrument. It's in a stand and this stand has in it a drawer and this drawer slides in and out. And you can see I've got some, some powders here. This happens to be paprika that I've already loaded into this little spoon that comes with the stand. And that spoon fits right into this little cutout. In place, I can now slide that drawer in and it will position that powder exactly where I need it to take a measurement. So let's come over to the software because in the software I can see, because I have an image-based spectrophotometer, an image of what's going to be measured. In fact, you can see that it's an image by the fact that if I move it, you can actually see me sliding it in and out. So I'm gonna slide that to a spot where I'm gonna take the measurement, I'm gonna give it a name, I'm gonna hit next, and the instrument's going to start taking its measurement. Now, an image-based instrument is slightly slower in measuring because of the kind of instrument that it is, but when it's done, I'm going to get color difference, very, very similar to the previous measurement. They're both 0.17 delta E, 2000 away from the color standard. Now I can quality control a powder, a liquid could, could work the same way. Um, we could load it into the spoon the same way and use the fact that this is a non-contact instrument to measure something we can't quite measure very well in a regular contact kind of instrument. So I can measure like the paprika like I did. Maybe I'm going to measure something like cinnamon like the other spoon that's here and judge it with something very specific like the cinnamon index. There are various spices that have specific indices that are used to measure their quality and based on what where they fall in an indice can even affect the price that can be charged for those spices. So it's a very important thing. This instrument with this stand and the spoon and the drawer allows us to measure those powders and those liquids. So now we're going to look at measuring liquids and we're actually going to do two different approaches, right? We've got two liquids up here. You can see one of them is fairly opaque. It's kind of a brownish khaki-ish color maybe and the blue, which is fairly transparent. So we'll be doing both methods. We're gonna start with this, um, which is creamed coffee, we'll call it, because that's kind of the color we've got um, that's in this tube. And in order to measure that, we're going to use this fixture, I'll lay the tube down for a second, which simply attaches to the front of the device. Now I've calibrated my instrument using its 25 millimeter plate. I'll show you that. Here's the 25 millimeter plate, you can see the the hole in it and it's labeled that. This plate is also a 25 millimeter opening, but it's got the surround on it with the white to use as a backer for whatever liquid I put in there. So that simply attaches to the instrument. So I've got the aperture plate and the holder in place. I'm gonna take my creamed coffee, as I'm calling this, in the tube and I'm gonna insert it into this holder. It's gonna hold that firmly in place. And now I'm queued up in my software, ready to measure my trial that I've labeled trial three. And if I simply hit the next button, the instrument will fire. It will measure the color of that liquid. And we can see it's very, very close, 0.09. I would simply, to measure the next batch or the next sample, take the cap off, pour the liquid out, clean it out if there's any residue in there, pour in the next liquid to be tested, return the cap, set it in place, and off I go. It's a very repeatable process, so that's how we handle measuring an opaque liquid or any kind of liquid where we want a reflectance measurement. So we've measured a, an opaque liquid that we did with reflectance. Now we're going to look at transmission, and to do that, 
it's going to involve us opening up the instrument. I'll go ahead and show you that for the transmission chamber. Inside the chamber we have a holder and that holder is going to hold this cuvette. Now the cuvette is a basically rectangular glass piece and you can see we've poured some of this blue liquid into that cuvette. Now it looks very different in color maybe um, because of the thickness of that. We're looking through a lot in the glass and a very thin amount here. So let's go ahead and insert this into the instrument. Slides right into the holder, holds the liquid in place up against the sphere, and then the measurement will be taken of the light that's passing through there. So with that set, we can leave this open. We're going to move over to the software, which I've already calibrated for a transmission measurement. You can see right here it says that the mode of the measurement is transmission. And so I'm going to go ahead and hit next. I've got a color standard already in there. And the light flashes. It shines the light through that liquid and I get a delta E of 0 0.03 because I'm literally measuring the same liquid twice here. Um, but had I, if were I to be testing batches of this liquid, I would then simply remove the cuvette, pour out the liquid, clean it as appropriate, pour in the next batch, slide the cuvette back in, and I can measure again. And I have the same kind of quality control um, metrics and functions that I use for quality controlling all kinds of things for color. It's just a way to measure liquid, and when the liquid is fairly transparent, sometimes a transmission measurement is better because transmission can tell us something about concentration. So if I'm adjusting how much color I'm putting in, more or less, to make it more or less transparent, transmission measurement can help me do that. So that's how we measure liquids in a transmission mode. So I'm going to demonstrate for you a new fixture we have for our handheld instruments. It works with the CI-64 like I have here today. It also works with an exact instrument. And this, this fixture is called the payment card holder. Um, let me describe its parts. So first off, there's a piece that attaches to the shoe of the instrument here this little bar, and that bar is going to help me guide the instrument to a measurement location. We can see on the fixture there's a silver slot, there's also a black slot. So on either side of this ruler I can position the device, and then I'm going to be using my actual ID badge um, because it's credit card sized and it fits in here, and the fixture will allow me to position the card like that. I then simply insert that guide on the, on the foot of the instrument, to slide the instrument to its location. The ruler can actually help guide me to a very specific spot if I want to be able to measure a very unique specific spot because that's where the color is going to get tested routinely. So my software is all set up, take a measurement. I'm going to go ahead and press it down, take a measurement. And just like that, I will get a new measurement into my software and we can see that that measurement actually failed um, and did not pass my tolerance against my color standard. So I'm going to slide the instrument over and measure a different corner of that same card just to get a little extra data in there so we can see that maybe it doesn't fail everywhere. That one happens to pass. Now, if there was a spot further up on the card, I could use a different slot to measure in a different area. And I also have the ability to rotate the card perpendicular to the way it was. The card will fit in that way as well. Now I can go into this slot and measure right there. And again, my software is dealing with the data. It's dealing with the data coming from this fixture just like I was measuring something that wasn't fixtured. Really, the fixture is about ensuring we can be consistent, that we're measuring the same location on the sample each time because we want to remove that variable from the equation so that we're really testing color. And if we have a color difference, we can rely on the fact that it's something we need to address coloristically. So thank you for attending our webinar today. Hopefully these examples of ways we measure unique samples were helpful to you. Please keep in mind that we've only demonstrated a few to you. We have many other means for measuring unique things. You can find information about that on our website or by talking with a, an X-Rate sales rep. And if you have questions, you're curious about how to measure something unique, please feel free to submit your question in the webinar panel. We promise we will get back to you with an answer. And thank you for your attention today.